video is part of our Qt C++ GUI development intermediate course and we will be using the basic knowledge we learn from the graphics view framework chapter. If you are interested in these basics and many more things we cover in the course, you can check it out from the link here, which is going to be shared in the video description below. In this lecture, we are going to continue and work on our Flappy Bird game. What we're going to do is move the bird up when the user presses the key in the scene and when they hit the space button on the keyboard, and we're going to move the bird up. This is the project as we left it in the last lecture. And uh, what we want to do now is put in a public method in the bird item class and uh, make it possible to move the bird up. Let's go here in the public scope of our method and we're going to say void shoot up because it's going to shoot the bird up. It's not going to take any parameter. And we're going to go down in the CPP file and implement this guy here. When the user wants to shoot up, the first thing we want to do is to stop any animation altogether. Remember, we have the Y animation to move the bird down and the rotation animation to rotate the bird as it moves down. What we want to do in the shoot up method is stop those animations. We're going to say Y animation stop. We stop the animation. We can call this method to stop the animation. And we say rotation animation. We want to stop that. And uh, we want to move the bird up a little bit and rotate it upwards to make it look like the bird is flying up. The starting value for the Y animation is going to be the current Y position. So let's say that set start value is going to be cur pose y the end value is going to be upwards we're going to say y animation set and value and we're going to take curve pose and subtract something so what we're going to subtract is a fraction of the height of the scene rectangle because this value can be dynamic and we want this to be as flexible as possible so we're going to say scene going to get the scene of this item we can get that we're going to call scene rect and we don't have access to those methods because we need to include q graphic scene let's do that now that we have this n we can go down and keep working on our thing here we want to say scene scene rect and we want the height and we want an eighth of that height here this is going to work fine and you can uh, easily adjust this if you don't like the value we have here. But uh, this is working fine for me. We want to set an easing curve to our animation. We're going to put that in here. We want to put in a duration and start the animation. Control A, Control I to align. And uh, these are values you can play with to see what you like more. The other thing we want to do when we shoot the bird up is rotated upwards and we're going to say rotate to and uh, we have that method we're going to pass in minus 20 because we want it to tilt to the top we're going to put in we are going to put in our duration and uh, the easing curve we want to use I just put those in here you can put in whatever you want just experiment with this things to see what you like more now we have the method to shoot up done we need a way to trigger it. How are we going to trigger this? Hmm, think about this. What I think I'm going to do is move the code to create my bird item in the scene. So I'm going to take out everything I have here in the widget CPP file, and I don't need to include the bird item anymore. We already know the bird works. The code here was just to try and test things out but we are done with that phase now. We can go in scene CPP and uh, initialize our bird item, but we're going to move the declaration for this in the header file. We're going to go there, include bird item. Let's do that. And we're going to put in our bird down here and uh, this should be all we need here. We don't need to use bird item here we just want to initialize this thing 
and we don't need to go through scene to add item here because this is a scene in itself. Now we have access to this bird. What do we need to do? We want to put in the key press event and mouse press event because we want to respond when a user clicks somewhere in the scene. Let's do that. We're going to do that pretty easily. We already know this things already. We're going to find mouse press event. We have that here and we have key press event right on top of it. We're going to add those in our class here. We're going to implement those in the CPP file. Let's do that. And we have our events here. Okay, what I want to do is to include these classes because we're going to use them in a minute. We're going to say include and I put in this graphic scene mouse event. We also want to include QKey event. Let's go down and use those in a minute. For mouse press event, we want to check which button was pressed. We're going to say if event button equals QT left button. That's what we want to handle things for. We're going to say bird shoot up. Okay. And after we do this, we're going to call the parent implementation. We're going to say Q graphics item. And we're going to call mouse press event, not mouse move event, mouse press event. And we're going to pass in event here. And it should work now that it's not. Okay, so let's see what happens. Call to non-static member function without an object argument. What is this? Oh, it's not QGraphics item, it's QGraphics scene. Sorry for this. Okay, we have this method here. We can actually try it. We can run the application and see what happens. Mm hmm the app should be here in a minute. And we don't have any bird here. Why is that? Hmm. Why is that? We don't have our bird on the scene. Now that we have this in, we can actually run the application and see how it's going to perform. We're going to run the application and we don't see our bird here. What I think the problem is, is that we, let's close this and talk about this. We are adding the bird here, first thing in the constructor, but in widget CPP, we add other things. We add our pix map and it's going to be laid on top of the bird. That's why we're not seeing the bird. What I think we can do is uh, go in scene and put in a method to add our bird item. We can make that public. So we're going to put that right here. We're going to say void void add a bird and we're going to put this in the CPP file and uh, again this is really not fixed you can do this in many different ways this is what I just find to be feasible for me okay so we have the method here now we want to call that in the widget CPP file when we finish set up the scene here. We can actually do that right at the end. We're going to say scene, add bird. And I think if we run it now, we should see our bird because we are adding that after we put our pix map here. Let's see what we get and here is our bird. We can uh, close the application, run it again. And if we hit, the bird goes up, but uh, it doesn't come down. Okay, so why is that? We are making some progress and introducing new problems as we move forward, but uh, this is fine. We're going to fix that. What we're going to do is move the bird down to the ground when the Y animation finishes. If we detect that the Y position have not reached the ground position yet, we're going to move the bird down regardless. That's what we're going to do here. We're going to put in a method which is going to say fall to ground if necessary. Let's go back to bird item and modify it a bit. We're going to put in a public slot. This is going to be fine if we make it a public slot. And we're going to implement this method. Let's go down in the CPP file and implement this. And what this is going to do is going to 
restart the animation as long as we haven't reached the ground position that we have defined here. We are going to say if y is less than the ground position because y grows as you go downwards. We're going to go inside and we want to use a getter for this guy. It's going to be a method. We want to stop the animations. We're going to say rotation animation stop. Let's do that, stop. And we want to say y animation stop. And we want to give it a new start to this guy. So I am going to put in the code here because you already know this. We're going to set a new value to the Y animation, which is the current position of the bird. We're going to give it an easing curve. We're going to move it up to the ground position. We're going to give it a duration and start the animation. In Y, we're going to rotate to 90. The duration is this, and this is the easing curve. So how do we trigger this method? We trigger it every time the Y animation finishes. We don't really need to say Y animation stop because it has stopped already. So we can comment this out and we're going to go up to here and say, connect Y animation, pound symbol, Q property animation. And we're going to say finished. And we're going to give this guy a lambda function. We're going to capture everything in the context. We're going to put in our parameter list and our body. Let's do that. And we want to put in the closing parentheses here and the semicolon. This is going to be fine. When this animation finishes, we want to call fall to ground What's that method called? Fall to ground if necessary. Cute creator hasn't updated its things, but we can put that in here and it's going to work hopefully. So every time the Y animation finishes, we're going to call this method. Y animation has already stopped, so we don't need to stop it here, but we're going to stop the rotation animation and we're going to restart the Y animation until we hit the ground position. This is what we're doing here. We can run the application and see if this does what we want. Hopefully it will. And look at this. We are able to fly around by clicking around here, but uh, the bird doesn't know that it's being hit by these columns. So it's keeping flying, but this is a good sign that we are making some progress. We're going to stop here in this lecture and actually make the bird know that it's been hit. The next thing we want to do is to respond in the same way when the user hits the space bar on the keyboard. We're going to go back. We're going to close this and go back to our scene. And uh, we're going to key press event. I think we need to do the same thing. In key press event, we're going to check which key was pressed. We're going to say event key equals QT key space. I think we had that. Yes, we do. And we're going to say bird shoot up. We're going to move it up and we're going to call the parent implementation for this. We're going to say Q graphic scene. And we're going to say key press event and say event because we want things to keep working the way they do by default. Okay, we have this and we run the application. We have the bird here. And if I press the space bar, the bird is also going to go up. This is pretty cool. And uh, it is what we set out to do in here to make the bird fly and go up and respond when it's going down. We're going to stop here in this lecture. It is getting pretty long. What we're going to do in the next lecture is put a button down below to start the game and uh, detect when the bird is hit by a pillar and stop the game and show the game over graphics here. All this thanks. So go ahead and finish up here and meet me in the next lecture.